This week's episode is sponsored by Dark Samson Hair Beauty Aesthetic Salon. 30 years in the hairdressing industry. You'll find all their information within the description. Please give them a follow. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to the Billy Moore podcast and today's special guest is Kane. Kane is a former bike member and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Kane. Uh, where do you want to start? At the beginning. At the beginning. <laughs> um, I was born in a small town called Congleton and um, I grew up in uh, all the children's home services mm. at the start of that. Uh, my parents died at a young age. They were... Um, I was took by my mum at the time from uh, age four round to a lot of uh, the mother and baby hostels. She didn't want to, uh, she couldn't cope with life pretty much. And uh, she dragged me through all of them. And uh, fast forward a few years, we got, uh, my grandma got custody of me. But was, uh, I was a bit of a problem child at that point, so they uh, couldn't handle me at their house. So I ended up in uh, all the children's homes and the boarding schools for a long time. And uh, my mum died when I was 13, uh, followed by my dad about four months later. Wow. And that was how it all started. Um, and that was uh, where we're up to. So you lost both parents yeah. at an early age. Yeah. And did you feel like they took you down a different path? Was you looking? It didn't, it didn't take me down a different path. And this is what I get across today. I think it, um, it, the path it took me down, I didn't really have a choice. Of, of what path mm. I went down, I was sort of forced into it. I was forced into that path. Mm. And um, how that path started was when I was took away from school and stuff like that, I'd missed out on, I think it was four years of education because they couldn't get me in any schools. Mm. So when they put me right back in school, I couldn't understand anything. And uh, that caused me to kick off then because it was... So you felt you felt like... Like you were, uh, you felt a little bit less down yeah, because you y- couldn't y- communicate you couldn't, properly. I couldn't do any of the stuff anyone was doing my own age. Yeah. Uh, when I got to high school, I'd missed, I think it was four years of primary school. And then I went on to miss another three years of high school. And then they expected me to go back and uh, understand everything that everyone else were doing, which I couldn't do. I ended up with home tuition in the end in the children's homes. And uh, that got me, I think I left with two GCSEs, which were E's. Hmm. So it, was, it was like the worst one you could have got <laughs> back in the day. Um, and that was, that was my education pretty much growing up. Um, the kids homes taught me a lot about life. That was, uh, that was more of an education to me than so what did you could f- teach me. Did you think, do you feel that like, you know, losing both your parents at an early age had a massive impact on your, on your, on your education? It had an impact on my education, but it had an impact on me socially, of, like how I could communicate with people and the, how was that? The things that when, I, when I was first put into the children's homes, for example, I couldn't... Um, we, we, we were locked up most of the time. Well, I say locked up, we weren't allowed out, and we had um, a strict routine of everything. So it was like a prison routine, but not in prison as such, if that makes yeah. any sense. So I had... Um, you had, like... I had my home tuition, and then I used to do things called outdoor education, which uh, they'd, they'd take me out rock climbing and stuff like that. And I used to go to the one in Liverpool, or some Walls, when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to do that. And uh, so that was the only real thing I ever did. And then I was back there. And then there was, you were living with kids. I, when I went in there, I think I was 13. You were living with kids who were up to the age of 16. But they more or less crammed 20 kids into a place who all had problems. So it wasn't the best environment. So you had to grow up really fast. So there was no sort of childhood involved there if you know what i mean there was none of this playing with your friends there was none of that it was all so you were never uh, allowed so also to be, be a child no no you i definitely missed out on all that that yeah. was um, that was missed out and i think i'll tell you one of my first experiences uh, the place is shut down now it's called a uh, priors hill hmm. in uh, macclesfield it was and when i was first in there the first week i was in there there was uh, a girl who lived in there I, I don't know her name to this day i think it was, might have been leanne possibly and um she, uh, I remember walking out of my room one day and uh, she threw something at me. And I thought, what? Then it landed, it landed on my top and I caught it in my arm. And um, she'd cut in her arm on a diagonal and pulled the chunk of skin out and threw it at me. Wow. And that was the mentality of the people I was living with yeah. at the age of 12, 13 onwards. And these were kids who were 16 who had been kept in their houses, for example, sexually abused by their parents all their life till they were found. And that was what the environment they put you in 
with another 20 other people like that. So there was no special treatment for any one kid who was there. There was never any fixing any problems back in them days. They didn't, there was never, there was no such thing when I was in them places. Like now we have ADHD and things like that. There was never anything diagnosed like that. You were just, you were a naughty child and that was that. And you were put in. So that's, uh, that was your, your life at yeah. a young age yeah. growing up. Yeah, that was it. It was in there, it was, um, I went to Priors Hill, Red Sands, they were all closed down in the end because um, the Ofsted reports on them said it needed all improvement and they refused to do it, so they all ended up being shut down in the end and mm. care got privatised towards the end of when I left. But until then you had all these, what well, the sort of like boarding schools as such where your yeah. education was on site and everything was on site in the places. Tell me a little bit about your early years because you you know you've been in prison, you've been involved in gig, yeah, well, bike gangs and. Well, what had happened is at the at the time I was living in a children's home in Ellesmere Port at the time, and because uh, they moved you across the country, it didn't matter yeah. where you was, and um, I used to used to do my rock climbing down at the place down here, and uh, I I done dead well. I was uh, ended up competing in it and become tenth in Britain. Hmm. But uh, the children's home were being funny about me going and all this, and I still wanted to do an activity, so I ended up, I got the train one day to Chester, and I crossed the road with this little boxing gym, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna start boxing. Yeah. So, I, um, I heard these pads being hit across six layers of tracks, and I thought, I wonder how that so I went across, and um, there was a boxer in there, I'll, I'll, I'll mention his name, because I still like him, he was, uh, he was called Alan Millet, mm. and I heard him hitting these pads from six train tracks away. I went in and I looked at them all in this gym and they, they were all big guys compared to me. And it turns out they were all doormen in Chester, yeah. the guys who trained there. I looked at them and I thought, right, this is it, now I'm training here. So I ended up starting uh, training there and uh, that was how the boxing started. So I got in, um, I was getting into fights in the, in the children's homes with uh, the other kids and stuff like that, but I wasn't the best fighter. So when it comes to the staff and things like that, if they tried to restrain you, they'd just do it. And um, so I thought, right, well, Something's got to change here. And I didn't like violence as a, as a kid. I hated it. I've, I've always disliked it. So yeah. I thought, right, I want to start doing this so I can defend myself a bit better. And that was how it all started. So I started training there. And um, that went on now for another few years. But what was happening in the children's homes is all of a sudden they, um, they couldn't cope with me. So when they were having meetings to make the decisions about what they were going to do with me, my future... I'd, um, I'd be able to fight back now. So all of a sudden, I started getting what I wanted. And that was, um, that was a quick lesson for someone with no education. So you were retaliating? Yeah, so then he's, then I think, right, well, if I start retaliating, I'll start getting what I want. So and you chose, chose violence yep. at an early age? Yep. And that, that after was, learning? That was how it started. Yeah. Was, um, they had a, I remember one, one notable thing that they did to me, which, uh, which I'll tell you about, which was one of the things, is when my mum died, I never knew who my real dad was. So I asked him, I said, look, because my mum wouldn't tell me who he was or anything like that. She said, um, cause she used to accuse a lot of people of beating her up all the time. So she wouldn't tell me. So this went on for years. Now, my mum had my two sisters as well. Yeah. Right. Now, they were living with her. So then for me, it was, you know, why, why can't I live with my family? Why am I stuck here? Why, why is this going on? So she wouldn't tell me who my real dad was. And then when she died, I said to my nan and granddad and the staff, I said, you need to find my real dad now. I said, she's gone now, so she didn't have a say in it. So the kids' own staff at this meeting decided, they said, it's not in your best interest to find out who your real dad is till you're 16. Yeah. You can do it of your own accord when you leave. Anyway, a month later, his death was in the paper. You know, so that was I said to him, if you just, why didn't you just make the decision that I asked for? How did you know it was your dad? It was his name <laughs> His name was there, and what had happened, it was with my nan and granddad. I went to see my nan and granddad on the Saturday, and um, my nan said to me, like, well, you the guy who's got the same name as your dad's in the paper under deaths. Yeah. So, they, so my man goes, do you want to go to the funeral and just see whether it was him? Because we'll know by his family. Yeah. Anyway, when I walked in, all the family looked like they'd seen a ghost when I walked through the door. So it was it was 100% him. I think it was 14 at the time, 13. Mm. And then all the family just said, well, you're obviously his son. You look yeah. a spitting image of him. So we knew straight away that that was it. Uh, so I didn't stay in touch with that side of the family. I just thought, you know what, I never knew him to begin with. So How I did your mum, sorry for mentioning uh, it, but how did your mum pass away? And at well, what age well, was she? She was in her, she was in her 30s, my mum was, wow. when she passed away. And what, what happened was she had, um, she had had, she had my two sisters, and uh, she, was a, she was a bad alcoholic, but years ago she used to be addicted to heroin. So she'd come off that, she had my two sisters, and then I think she bottled a copper and got sent back down to prison. 
So she got two years. I was still in the children's home at this point. I hadn't spoke to her for five years or something like that. She wasn't in touch with me. And then she come out and there was two, I think there was two or three smackheads that lived above her in these flats and they got evicted. And she said, if you want, you can stay with me for a few nights till you get over it, till you sort somewhere out. So they've come down. She's done gear for the first time again in that many years, died. Um, over over toast. Yep. So over easy. Toast. Yep. And they didn't um, they didn't ring anyone about it till the next day. They didn't ring her an ambulance. They just left her there because they still wanted to stay in a flat, basically. So it was the next day they called it in. So they couldn't revive her from that point. Did you have any feelings of vengeance or? No, not really, because I was, I was um, very quick to move on with stuff. If yeah. you know what I mean. So to me, it was I've always thought it, it's in the past, and I'm not going to look back. Bury it quickly you know and then I mean? move on. Yeah, that's it, and it, I think that's what you do. But years on, if you know what I mean, you know, as you get older, you start thinking of these things, don't you? And yeah. It's like um, when I was younger, I didn't really care. It was just like, well, didn't know you, so not bothered. But then years later, I think to myself, like you know. I don't think I can forgive my mum to this day for yeah. the things she did, and I, I still won't, you know, and that's where I'm at mentally with that. Um, I won't be able to forgive the people that give her drugs, that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, but that was uh, that's life, isn't it? That's what happened. This was the card I was dealt, so it's hand I was so dealt So it, it, just, it just proves that, like, you never had a, you know, a great start in life no. the, from the beginning, going forward, mm. really. You know, you, you, were, you, you were the shun of a, a heroin yeah. addict who was... Yeah. In recovery, but drinking at the same yeah. time, you know, you did know your dad was. Yeah. You were in and out of kids' homes. You felt rejected because your two sisters live with your mum and you. Yeah. And I, that's that's got to be massive. Like it, uh, it didn't. Well, I've read the social services files since you know years later onwards, and um, when we was in, it wasn't just that. It was the things she used to do. Like when I lived with my mum, like she'd strangle dolls in front of me and say, "This will be you," and yeah. stuff like that. And I didn't remember it until I read it there. So. It, it never bothered me, but I knew that she was just a horrible person. Mm. So whether that's, you know, the drugs making her do that, because I don't think that's anyone naturally, I don't think no. anyone naturally is a horrible person. But at the end of the day, why would you choose drugs over your kids? That's the that's the thing there, isn't it? It's a big one, really, because I've worked with addicts and I've been, mm -hmm. you know, in, on the receiving end of it myself. And I feel that what happens is you, you, you become, drugs become more important than anything, yeah. anything yeah. right? Now, take them away, and there's a lot of shame and a lot of guilt, mm. and there's a lot of reflection. Yeah. Now, if your mum have had that opportunity to, yeah. to get into that recovery where she had the um, that, that, that way of thinking, yeah. then maybe she, she would have been different. I don't know. Mm. Um, but I know, for me, it's quite... Um, it's, it's just... It's, it's, you're driven. You're yeah. powerless. That's it. Well, you know. that's what I thought, but then I thought, you, you, you've given them opportunities a lot of times, you know what I mean? And you know, you took my sisters, you got off everything, you had my sisters. So on uh, my files and stuff, it was uh, instead of suffered from emotional abuse and all stuff like that. But again, I don't I don't sit there and say, oh, I suffered from this. Yeah. I just get on with life. I'm not you know? here to, you see, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't defend, I'm not here to no, defend. No, it's, it's what, not him. Um, what I'm trying to do is uh, like just identify yeah. a little bit. At the mm. same time, right, you know, I can see your view where like, yeah. there's willingness, there's got to yeah. be, you know, yeah, hang on. Be, this is to be something, but there wasn't, you know, no. and that's what, like, that's what it, yeah. ended, ended up down that road. So when um, when I started my boxing, we'll move on to that, was um, I got to age, I think I was 17, and uh, the children's home after all this, I'd left with two GCSEs and uh, pretty much nothing else. When we got to 17, that generation that was in care, I don't know what it's like now, it's probably improved a lot. That generation, it was literally said, well, right, um, we're done with you now. Um, Move on. Yeah, uh, bye bye. So it was like, whoa, hang on. I haven't been fucking taught anything for outside here. You know, so what do you, keep in mind, I, I hadn't even had a phone at that age. I hadn't even used a mobile phone. So they wouldn't let us have them. We had, we had a landline in the house, that was it. So it was, it was a big shock when I come out of there. Well, what started happening was, I was training at the boxing gym a lot of the time. This was um, a main one in Chester. It was um, it was at the time it was full of dorm and he used to train there at the weekends. So what happened is I was training there and the staff didn't like it. Yeah. So they rang the gym up and they said, we, we don't want Kane training there anymore. So we can't handle him. And um, the staff at the gym, they said, um, well, he is training here. I said, and uh, that's that. They said, well, we won't give him, we won't pay for his membership. And the owner said, well, I don't want his money. He says, um, and if you don't drop him off, it'll come pick him up. So that was how that started. I ended up cleaning the machines in the gym for my free membership. Mm -hmm. at, uh, I think it was age 15. 
So I trained for two years and I started um, doing the amateur juniors and stuff yeah. like that. Which um, I didn't have, I didn't have many fights at all, and it was just more, you know, points and inter clubs and stuff like that, and it wasn't anything special. And um, after that, it was when they kicked me out. They said, "Right, well, you're from Congleton, so we've paid a deposit on a house in Congleton for you and mm. a month's rent up front. So you need to get a job within a month." Oh, well, hang on, what what do you mean get a job? I've, so I, d- I didn't have any skills. The only skills I had mm. was boxing. So um, I went down. I said to him at the gym, I said, "You know." I've They've done this. They've kicked me out. And I said, right, well, um, we'll give you a job on one of the nightclubs with us. So that was how uh, my entrance to uh, door work started. So, so really what know. age was you working on the doors? I, ju- I was just turning 18 at the time. I think they got me on when just before I was 18. And it, it was when the SIA wasn't really in force as such at the time. Yeah. Not like they are now. And um, so I ended up on a... Um, on this pub, and I'd never even been a pub in my life. I'd never even been drinking at a pub. Yeah. And then uh, all of a sudden, I was on You're the door. And I said, like, well, what did we do? You know, I said, well, all the things you've been training for in the gym, you were, um, they kick off, you knock them out. So then, um, and that's it. So then all of a sudden it was like, and I'm getting paid, at the time it was decent wages, because now you've got the, all the job centre staff working on doors who can't do anything. But at the time you were looking at between 10 and 15 quid an hour to work on the door. Yeah. So I've gone from being like in a children's home with this strict routine to now you're getting 12 pounds an hour just to throw drunk people out of a pub. And it was like, well, this is not that bad, this. So uh, that's how that started. I ended up, um, well, it, it made me a lot worse, to be honest with you. It was, um, there were, I think there was, a, there was still a lot of violence that had to come out it's, of me. It's, do you know what it sounds like to me? That like you're, um, you, you suppressed a lot of feelings mm. over yeah. the years. And this is, from experience, yeah. where you, you bury it deep, you know, and uh, you avoid feeling, yeah. and it'll come. It's like it's like collecting, it's like like a squirrel collecting nuts. Yeah. You know, you're gonna put them away. Little resentments, little mm. resentments. They builds up, yeah. and then you explode, yeah. and then your life takes another turn. Yeah. Well. So, where, what, what become of you? You know, with the with the because hey. you became a you know. You know, you, you got involved in a, in, a, in a Hell's Angel kind of type no, gang. No, they, were, they weren't uh, the Hell's Angels. They were, um, they was, well, there was like a, a small club in Cheshire, is uh, what it what I'll call them. And um, what happened was I'd, I'd been on the doors and I was, uh, I was doing me fighting and stuff like that and they ended up getting sent down. I got uh, four years in the end. Yeah. For, um, I got done for kidnapping someone. And, Tell uh, us about that, please, up. Kane. Well, do you know what? It, it, looking back, it was just me involved with the wrong people. That was all it was, and easily led to go and do something, to go do something stupid. And that's that's what happened. I was literally used because I could fight. Do you felt you were uh, vulnerable? I, I think so, in a way, yeah. I Not physically. I, just, I think I was just easily led to to go along with stuff. You know, I didn't have many friends at the time, and the friends you have when you're like that, they're not, in, they're not there to be your friends. They're there because they want something out of you. Yeah. That's, uh, that's all they want, so that was what it come down to. And then you, you don't think like that at the time. You don't look back and go, well... You weren't really my mates, you just think... What well, age was you when you got... I was I was just about to turn 20 when I did so that. So you were still a young offender? Yeah, well. yeah. And um, I did the transition between young offender and cons when I was inside. And um, it was... it was like Someone wanted to tax him. He sold gear, and I just went along to do him in. And that was all there was to it, really. And uh, But then it ended up with him getting thrown in the car. So it became it like be- you're going out to rob someone it, with it, someone else... And then it's yeah. saying, see what happens, mate. Well, to me, it, it turned out it was just an assault to me. I just wanted to beat the guy up. I, I didn't like him anyway. And, um, so I thought, you know, I'll join him just because I don't like him. But then I, I didn't think it was going to turn into a, a big kidnapping. I didn't think anything like that. So this kid, but, so this kid was a drug dealer, yeah. right? Yep. So he's being kidnapped. Yep. He's being threw in a car. Yep. And five a few page, slaps. Five-page statement he yep. made against me. A few few slaps and then he's, uh, he's made a statement yep. against you. Yeah, yep. five-page one. Some, yep. some fucking drug dealers out there. Like, yeah, that's it. That is, that's, uh, that's how it is nowadays. Everyone does it. They can't win in a fight. They go to the police, and that's yeah. all they do. So I'd done me, I'd done me years inside, and I thought, well, um, we're going to. Is that your first time? Like, obviously, that, that was my first time you've inside. Had, you've had it. You've had a history of like being separated and yeah. locked up and isolated. Do, do you know growing what? Up. It, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad to be honest with you. And it's not a deterrent, prison is a deterrent at all. I don't believe it is. No. And um, when, when I, I think it was more, it was more the, I'd say the being away from people, but I didn't really have anyone who was there for me anyway. So it was, so that wasn't a deterrent for me. So I'd be able to go to the gym every day, which I like to do anyway. 
And um, that was so when did you get these tattoos on your face? Because it's, was, a, it's probably it's a big thing, I isn't was, it? Uh, well, it was um, bring that a little bit forward to I started off. I got um, I met a bloke on the door. He's uh, he's passed away now. He was a good mate of mine. He was called Ross Williams. Yeah. And um, he owned a tattoo studio at the time, and I started working with him. Yeah. And that was sort of my introduction into Thai boxing was with him. So because um, I'd never done anything like that, I just used my hands. And yeah. um, I ended up starting Thai boxing with this bloke I was working with. And um, he was a tattooist, so he said, "Oh well, let's do some tattoos on you then now because you need some tattoos." So I thought, well. I used to look at people and I used to think, oh, you look really odd with just yeah. one, you know, like one or two tattoos. I thought, I'm either going to get covered or get none. Yeah. And I thought, there's going to be no in between. We're going to be either full or nothing. So that was uh, the decision. It was right, well, everywhere's going to be full then. So I did that. And um, I think I got, to my, I got to my face about six years ago. And um, I had, I had uh, some of the motorbike club tattoos around my neck and my head. But ones like they that, they? just the motorbike ones. Won't say the name of them. Yeah, I don't want to give them any credence on this at all. Um, they don't deserve the limelight off me. So um, I got them done, and then uh, the other stuff was intertwined with tribal stuff because there is hidden meanings to all of it. But it's there. Uh, they're just for me. Them meanings. I got um, I got a star on my eye for in memory of my friend because that's the one who died. Russ. He was one who did most of my tattoos. Mm. So uh, and that was how that started and. I never. I always thought it'd be different anyway. I never mm. thought it'd be the same as everyone else. So. So you've never, you've never, um, you've never regretted. No, not yet. No, not yet. Never, not yet. <laughs> I've never, I've never really cared to be honest with you. I've never, yeah. never really bothered. I mean, the people that know me, and um, they know do, I'm do, not. Do, do you find? Because I see we, um, there's a kid that was in um, that played the gang Bosch in, in the movie mm. A Prayer Before Dawn. Yeah. And he, you know, the ties obviously they love. Yeah, you love tattoos, yeah. and his face is um, is covered in tattoos. Yeah. He's a real, you know, he's a real, he's a real character. He's a he's he's, he's a former inmate, yeah. and he's just um, he's just is who he is. But yeah, it's it's frightening, isn't it? You know, because yeah. like there weren't many inmates that had the whole face mm-hmm. tattooed. Now, have you had? Yourself, any um, odd looks or I, people saying I anything it, about I it? I have it a lot, yeah. No, those times, I, I forget that I've got them. Yeah, like you for was, example, I so. forget that I've got either, yeah. <laughs> like when, like when, um, when, you, when you was in with people who all look the same as you, yeah. right, you looked normal. You, know, so you look like every one of them. But it's only when you're walking around as do with your missus and then people are looking at you, you think, what the fuck's he looking at? And you think, oh, yeah, it's because all my face is that's covered it, in tattoos, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's, that, there's that, you have to get over that little bit, and you all oh, people do look like... A, a kid fell down a step the other day staring at me, you know? Like, that as an example. Yeah. But I think another thing that I didn't realise was how, how intimidating it looked. Yeah. Because I didn't really think of that, because I've never gone off looks to decide if someone's intimidating. I've yeah. always, always... I think people are the same, no matter what they look like, it doesn't matter. So, but you'll have like, there were situations in the pubs, for example, where I think, right, this, this group's gonna, they, we're gonna have it with this group that's in. And they, they'll be walking out at the end of the night and they'll all say to me, you're the fucking scariest thing I've ever seen. Mm. And it's like, what the, I thought, I thought it was gonna go off with them lot about half an hour ago. And it turns out they won't. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it's stuff like that that just. Do you feel sometimes like it's like a, it's like a little bit of a coping mechanism. It's a protective. Because for me, well, it's like, like a mask, isn't it? Yes, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Because for me, years ago, I was like, um, I'd act as if it mm. was uh, nuts. And people say to me, he's not a band, he's crazy. And I'd, I'd, I'd absorb that. Yeah. And I'd enjoy the uh, the fact that people thought about me like that. Yeah. But in reality, I was quite, um, I was quite vulnerable. I was quite like, I wasn't scared. Mm. As such, it was most, just more. I just wanted to keep you away, yeah. Because I'd had loads yeah. of loads of hurt over the years, loads of pain, mm. loads of misery, and it was like, you know what? I can't be asked with people, and sometimes mm. today I just can't be asked yeah. with people. You know, it's a, it gets that way where I, f- I find it difficult to trust people. Yeah, you know, and, and when I do trust someone, and then I get bitten, mm. I think, you know what, mate? You just reinforce yeah. the fact that yeah. this fucking planet is full of rats and. Scum. Well, that that's it, and well, that's why uh, that's why I end up, you end up leaving most of the groups you're with and stuff like that, don't you? Because yeah. you know people roll over on you, you know, and there's, um, that's how life works, isn't it? So I think I can probably count on one hand the amount of people I trust. Well, you you're know? a young lad. What you're 32. I've got 
you know. I think I can literally count the um, me missus, I promise not to say a name on here, but um, there's, there's her and there's um, probably my mate George. That's pretty much the only two people that you can I can, trust. I can, I can actually put faith in, you know, if I know if I ring him in the night and say, right, I need your help, you know, there won't be a question of what is it. And Shane made... On his way. Yeah, the shame. I've, I've got, like, I could, I could name, you know, the friends that I've got, mm. you know, um, the ones I can trust. Yeah. But that's about it, really, mm. on one hand. You yeah. know, so... Right, you're a young lad, you're 32, yeah. So mm. what, tell me a little bit about, because uh, this is, this is, this is, I, I want to know about this, you know, the, yeah. the bike gang stuff. Yeah. And well, what, what happened is I come off the, come off the door, gone to prison, and um, I'd gone from, I, I used to, when I started doing that security, I got asked for staff at the other pubs, so I was only 18, 19, but I was supplying dormant to the different pubs around these little towns in Cheshire. Yeah. So I was earning quite a good amount of money from it. And I was still boxing at the time as well. And um, when I got sent to prison, they literally took everything off me. They took me, took all my door qualifications, so I couldn't box anymore. That was another thing. So when I come out of there, I literally had nothing. Mm. I had nothing exciting. And um, I knew a member of this bike club. I knew him. He, he was called Harry, and he was, it turned out to be a good mate of mine. Mm. And um, it, it was him, and it, I ended up getting involved with it because of him. And it was just more something fun to do, you know, and something mm. exciting yeah. that I could do again. Um, did you feel? There's, there's did, you f- did you feel right before? I, I'm a button in here, but did you feel that you you had that need to be around a group of people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course, I did and that's it's just you need something in your life, don't you? But obviously, the only choices I made were always bad ones, right? So the people I'd be around were always bad people. So this was a bad so, family. Yeah, yeah. I'd say for me it was. You know, what I mean, it was. I don't regret anything I did. It's just if I could, I turn back and I, I could say to myself now. You know, just don't do these things. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. go and get on with your life because that all that to me, it was that that wasn't me as a kid, if you know what I mean. So going back, I, I don't think I'd have made any of them choices if mm-hmm. it had been normal. It was just circumstance stepped me into every one of them, and I, I didn't have the ability to say, "Oh, this is a bad decision," mm-hmm. or I didn't have any didn't have any role models. Let's put it that way, or anyone to guide me and to say, "No, don't do this." So a lot of stupid decisions come from that. You know, so you think, oh, that's the right thing to do. And it, it turns out years later, it's not the right thing to do. Yeah. And that's how it all started. Obviously, I can't say much about the motorbike clubs because they still have, I still, even though they might not, I still have uh, some elements of secrecy about it because that's part of the rules to it. Yeah. But um, So there's a rule that you have to be, have, have like, a, like, oh a, yeah, like so a pact? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, if you imagine gangs like today that you've got, like, we were talking about that stabbing before, weren't we? Yeah. And you talk about gangs like that, and they're very unorganised, you know, and that's the, they do stupid things like that, whereas... It's, it's federal. And, yeah. Yeah. And, but then people know about it, whereas in, like, say, the adult clubs, let's call them, you, you don't have that because you're all older people, you know, so there is, like, that code of secrecy between you, yeah. and it, don't, it never gets out, you know what I mean? And that's... All so you swear by it. that, so yeah, any yeah. secrets that you've had yeah, from... Yeah, st- I still will to this day, you know what I mean, I'd never, um, I'd never, even though I'm not part of it all anymore, I'd still stick to, you know, I think they were my own morals because they agreed to it when I joined. So what kind of things can you talk about then? Well, <laughs> um, I'll tell you about things that, that I've done, you know what I mean, yeah. stuff like that. Um, uh, through, through the years, there was, there was a lot of fights, yeah. as you can imagine, there was... Um, there was just that camaraderie of, you know, you go out, you drink, you do what you do, and then you get into fights, you go home, and it was like that that outlaw lifestyle of not giving a fuck, like you'd have 10 pints and drive home, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And you wouldn't care, if you got stopped, you wouldn't stop. Do yeah. you know, stuff like that, and it was, it was more that lifestyle, but it turned out to be every day of the week. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't just one night, did you, you know? Did, did, you f- did you find that you had a reputation? Oh yeah, the reputation of, was- Of uh, like fear the and respect. The reputation was, was fucking ruthless yeah. at the time, it was. Um, but then, um, I'll, like say, things move on, don't they, in time, and um, you start you start seeing little cracks in places, you start going, hang on a minute, so it's not quite right. Did you think Did you think to yourself, like, this is, um, this is like, now it's going down, it's, it's quite yeah. sour now? Yeah, it was yeah. A, there, it was was a, there was a point where I got to that point. It was all fun and thought, games at the beginning. Yeah, and well, it, at the beginning there was, um, it's the, there's the different people that come and go. You yeah. could call it that. And um, the people that was there when I joined were different. And um, the people that were there in the end are just, um, it's not for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's 
all the watch. I haven't got anything bad to say about them because some of the, some of the lads are, are good. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I can't slag off. There's always it. There's always it. It's a mixed bag, isn't it? Yeah. yeah was there, was there it. any kind of initiation? Yeah, there was loads. What was the, What was your initiation <laughs> then? Um, uh, I remember what it was at the time. So uh, probably drinking. Probably drinking something. Yeah. But um, there was all there was all stuff like that over the years. You know. Um, it's, it's commonly known that prospects, when you're trying to get into these clubs, they, you, you do as you're told. And um, yeah, I can imagine a prospect, like a prospect to me was was anything for my own amusement. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that was. But at the end of the day, I don't think that proves anyone to be anything, really, does yeah. it? I think um, I think that's it. And now you've got people joining these clubs who who shouldn't really be there. Do you know what I mean? You've got you've got people having midlife crises, for example. Yeah. You know who. It was just making a bad decision, you know. And you've got people like that, and you can't count on them. Like a midlife so, crisis, so yeah. you've got like people in the forties, yep. like just turning up late, wanting to be but a part of something, mate, and finds out it's not what it is. Moonlighting, they're doing like full legitimate jobs in the day, you know what I and mean? Then like, throwing leathers on overnight. Yeah, and that's it. And then coming out and trying to be a bad guy. Like, fuck off, mate. You were no one before. <laughs> You're not gonna be anyone now just because you got something on your back. What was the yeah. kind of things that you used to get up to? Was it was the any? You know, I'm asking these questions because I, I don't know the answer. But was the any um, was the any like crime involved? I know there was violence, but there's no, in in any club. There's never any group crime involved. Mm. It's always individuals. So if you're if like, so, it's like it's like if if I was a drug dealer, for example, it doesn't mean that that entire group of people are drug dealers. Yeah. It just means I am. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's the same with. The, I think everyone portrays it in a different way. So you've got you've got a lot of branches to that because you've got them people who are living off the reputation of others mm. who were there, who that's not them, you know, and it never has been and never will be. You know, so they're living off that reputation and everyone's suddenly scared of them, you know, and there's that. And then you've got the opposite end to that. It's like a, a copper got done for a murder in London recently. Yeah. You know, does oh, that, yeah, does that yeah. make all coppers murderers? No, it doesn't. No. You know, but people are quick to judge any type of gang on on the basis of that. You know, just because oh, it, it's a gang and they're bad. Well, yeah, well, but the, but the, the mere mention of like or the mere title of like gang mm. kind of like it it it, it portrays, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, what does what's behind that gang? What's what does a gang do? Yeah. They don't fight on their own. A lot of the um, a lot of the motorcycle they call themselves clubs these days, so they class it as a motorcycle club. So, so what's the most? What's the most famous club in the world then, or is it the LZ Angels? The best ones, I'd say the Bandidos. The Bandidos, the best ones. where will they be? Uh, all over. Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, I think they're the best ones around. Um, like I say, I don't know much about any of the others. See, I, I, see, I grew up on the likes of, uh, what was it, fucking hell, Clint Eastwood and uh, <laughs> looking any which way but Lucian. Yeah, was that with Clyde, the one? Yeah. <laughs> used to go around <laughs> knocking them all out. Yeah, I've seen well, that. They're the kind of, like, bikey gangs that I <laughs> kind of... Yeah, it was a... Uh, a lot of it's like, uh, a lot of it's like, people think it's like the films. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, and it's not. No, nah, it's, it's nothing like that. It's not as fun, to be honest with you. So <laughs> what what bike, what bike do you ride? Me, the one, the one I've come on today is uh, 1100 Shadow. Yeah. Outside. And, um, yeah what's what's your favourite bike? I think that. Is I it? Think I've, I've always had them for years. They've been always been my favourites. Is it? Yeah. So, yeah. I have Robin Reliance in winter. You know, the cars, the three wheeled ones, yeah. because I've only got a motorbike licence. So. I drive around in them in winter. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's your looking one of them? <laughs> uh, I look all right. You're getting out, getting out of a robbery line yeah. with a face full of tattoos. Yeah, that's it. Do you know what? A lot of people road rage me <laughs> thinking I'm dead old, and then when yeah. you stop, the, uh, they, they stop road raging for yeah. some reason. They're not. Do you feel not sometimes, like, do you, do, you, do you feel like the, um, that the way you look and the way you, you know, you, you persona, it gives off like a little vibe, and people go, whoa. Well, not much bit up. Oh, do you think they just it, it does judge? until they speak to me? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, and then a lot of people who know me will, will tell you that I'm always I'm always dead funny. Yeah, I've got a good sense of humour, and uh, I'm never serious about anything. You know, there's nothing. I'm never serious anymore about a single thing. I find it pretty much everything funny. And so, how did you get out of these gangs? Me in the what end. What did you do? I just, to uh, I just left. And, I just and, left and you can do that. Said, um, well, I did. Yeah, um, you just go right. I'm going. And, uh, and that was it. It was, it come from. I wanted a big life change, to be honest with you. I wanted, oh, um, I wanted to, I wanted to stop everything that I was doing at the time. That was, uh, I was like, the bike clubs. 
it was like the toxic relationships, I wanted to be out of all that. Yeah. And uh, it needed a big, complete life change for me. And then um, when when I did that, it was um, it, I struggled for a, f- a few weeks, if you know what I mean. And that was well to you know, to, 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 to to make that decision to yeah, move just on. To, just to think, where you know, like where am I going? Because I look around and I think, you know, like those people of my own age, you know, who were like they're married, they've got kids, yeah, they've bought houses. I'm sat there thinking, I've got a fucking motorbike. That's it. You know what I mean? And it, it's like, hang on a minute, I need, I need to do more than this. And then you, you're trying to work, but you're trying to do this party lifestyle at the same time. And, and none of it works together, does it? You know, and no. you, if you're struggling, like, financially as well, you're only working, you got to think of employment for me as well. That was yeah. always that was always a problem because anywhere that I'd lived previously knew or was from uh, all the paper spreads that they did about me from yeah. crimes. So that was the first one. I was known for miles everywhere. So that was a normal job gone. You can, you know, the GCSEs, I got an E in, in two of them. <laughs> that, was, that was it. So you can't do that anymore. So there wasn't many options left yeah. at that point. So a lot of people would, would go downhill at that point and just go, right, crime. You know what I mean? And that's the only way to make ends meet. But I don't think it is. I think you, you make your own choices, don't you? And um, I thought, right, well, I had my amateur boxing coaching license when I was younger. I thought, right, I need to go and do that again. And then um, this... Like, my gym now is a... So you're on a gym now, don't you? Hello. Yeah, I, start, I started training at a dead young age. It went from yeah. boxing to Thai boxing into other stuff. And in the end, what I worked out is all the things I'd used, you know, through all the bad stuff I did in my life, all come from training. Mm. And um, so in the ring, when I used to fight in the ring, I wasn't very good. But then when I was at work on a Friday night and there was no rules all of a sudden, there was adapted techniques for what I was doing. So I thought, well... So I need to put all that together now, you know, and have it as my own thing. So my gym, I don't class it as anything. I have my Thai boxing coach, which is called Mike Booth, and mm. he's one of the best guys around for it, in my opinion. He's an older guy now, and uh, he can't really do the sport anymore, but he's one of the best coaches I've ever had in my life. So I train with him every day still, and I yeah. put videos up of me training with him all the time. But that's not what I teach to uh, as what I call martial arts, because mm. I, don't, I don't box it in as any type of specific art it's not boxing it's not Thai boxing it's just what I call martial arts mm. and uh, I teach it on one to ones I don't have any classes surviving basically yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have any classes yeah. because I don't believe in them I think um, I can't give someone the attention they deserve in a class of ten yeah. so all my stuff's one to one it was all always really cheap I always charge people a lot less than everywhere else because when I trained as a kid I had no money Yeah. You know, and when I was 18 I had no money so all these expensive places to train out I couldn't train so that sort of stopped my career in anything because to be good now you've got to pay a lot of money to mm-hmm. do it, and that to me isn't my intention. What was the, the um, what was the decision that made you change the route in life? What did you want? To, what what did you know? I know you talked about um, you know you, you know friends that you know they were married and they had mm-hmm. cars and houses. Oh. Did you get to a point in because I know I did. Yeah, I got to. I think it was about twenty five, but I didn't change for another ten years. I thought I've had enough of this, mm. and then ten years later, I'm still doing the same thing. Yeah. Did Did you just go? Well, you know what? There was a few times when I did it when I tried to make that change and it didn't work. You know what I mean? There was there was a good few times on that, right? But th- this time it was it was different. It was, I was thinking, right, I just I can't I can't be looking over my shoulder anymore. There was there's been, you know, I had fights in prison. Yeah. You know, I had fights outside all the time. So then you think, right, well. I'm going to be constantly looking over my shoulder all the time, which I don't want to do, you know, and I, I thought, I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. Do you know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong, I, I still train every day. So, you know, if someone does have a problem, right, just to say, right, I, I'm not soft anymore, right? Mm. I haven't just gone soft. And just remember, it weren't me who started these problems, right? So I still train. So you've I'm changed, still, but you haven't changed into I, abuse. Basically, no, no, I think um, that's what my I made to me. My said to me years ago, we said, yeah. Bill, you've changed, but you haven't seen this. Yeah, abuse. that's um, you know, it, it's it's you become more aware. They always say, don't they? It's time for war, it's too late to sharpen your sword, isn't it? So, yeah, keep it sharp <laughs> just in case. And that's that's my mentality. I think I'll always train, I don't think I'll ever stop. Yeah, and it's um, also good for like your um, yeah, your mental health as well. Yeah, it is. But I mean, like, I, I train twice a day, I lift weights in the morning, and yeah. then I do me, me boxing at night time still. And yeah, I still do that. And I, I felt, I think it's, I've been, I haven't touched alcohol now for two years. Well done. I have, I have the odd pint with uh, my girlfriend, we go out for a meal. And, that, and that's it, you know. And 
and it's like even then I feel bloated and I think oh I don't even know why I drank that it was horrible you know yeah, so yeah. but now I've actually trained consistently for two years now and well, that's every day which I haven't done that consistently since I was a kid so that's been one benefit to it and uh, I'm seeing the benefits of it now you know just of how my training's going I think I'm a lot better now that I'm older because I've got more experience as well and that played a big part yeah and uh, as for me, me gym, that was that started by fluke. As it what's, your, what's your gym called? Do you Just know what? what? I sounds stupid. But I don't really have a name for it. <laughs> it's um, I call it Sinister Combative, and that's um, that's just like my brand to it. And, Sinister um, Combative. Yeah, that's um, all I've called it. I don't have signs up outside. No. <laughs> I, um, all my stuff's done on one to one, and uh, that's all there is. I don't do anything else. Uh, I started looking into going into branding all my stuff when uh, at the start of this virus well when we had the third lockdown it was on the first lockdown this is how all my gym started it was um i came people mithering me to train them because they knew i I trained myself and i thought i don't really want to and then they said come on i'll I'll give you 20 quid so i thought i'm out of work now because this virus i'll I'll go on then so i started meeting people in the park to do pad work with them and that's how we started and then i ended up with that many people doing it i thought i'm gonna get a place to do this so I went back into that and uh, I just sacked all my other jobs off that I was doing and just went into it full time again, which I think has benefited me because I've got um, I've got people who sort of rely on me for that now as well. Yeah. And um, which, which brings me to one of the lads who are training. He's um, he's got Asperger's and he's trained with me now for I think it's been six months. He's trained with me and uh, he's gonna have his first fight in uh, two months time now. So you're saying this kid? Yeah, yeah, he's do, he's doing really beginning well. And when, he's he wasn't really a beginner. I mean, he'd messed about a lot at other, yeah. I'm going to call them McDojos that he's been training at. And um, that's what he's been doing. But a lot of his stuff, it wasn't wasn't very good. And uh, so he's, he's come to me and um, I got him over this, this hurdle of uh, well being hit and actual, you know, training and sparring and, yeah. and actual violence. And uh, and now he's, he's, was he six weeks away from his first fight now? Brilliant. And, uh, he's never fought in his life. Well, that was something he's always wanted to do. He just hadn't had the people to get him to that point to do it. You know, so he's doing that now, and he's doing it for uh, autism awareness. So we're doing a lot for that at the minute. Brilliant. You know, to yeah. try and raise some money for that for him as well. So that's uh, where I'm up to with him. And uh, he's again, he's, he's all over me Instagram, Facebook. You know, mm-hmm. the training videos of what he's doing. I've got I put the befores and afters on for him. So yeah. He's dead happy with that because he can see how much he's progressed from it. And I think mm-hmm. it's, it's made him a lot more confident as well. So it's been nice to actually do something positive for the first time in years where I can say, well, like, you know, I've helped this kid out a little bit. Do you know what I mean? And that's been a good thing for me. So, yeah, I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm so doing. So, as you feel like, you know, that, that you know, you, you've got more focus and, and you, yeah. you get, you get, you're getting the rewards that life. Yeah. Because that's what it is really, mate. Yeah. It's like, you know, we've been a drain to our societies. Mm-hmm. We've been, we've been, We've been dregs yeah. of society. We've been labelled this, yeah. that, and the other. We labelled ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. And and I and I believe right that um, you know, if you want to change, you can change, yeah. you know. And you know, benefit your community, benefit your society, benefit your families. Yeah. This is um, you know, you're doing a lot for autism awareness. I do myself yeah. with my brother. It's um, you know, my brothers. You met him before. Yeah. I'll take him wherever I can, when I can. Although I've got my own little family at the same time. Yeah. He's my brother and he's my family and that's yeah. how it is. Mm-hmm. End of. Um, and I love the bones of him. And he's never going to get the ring. Obviously, he's yeah. not in. He's not capable yeah. mentally. It, it, he's he's still quite innocent in the sense yeah. of like you know, he's he's got the the, yeah. the mindset of a yeah. of a young young child. But uh, for you now, right? Is this what you want to do? Continue to like sort of like encourage younger people and kids with autism? I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for me yet. It's what would you um, like it to hold for you? Um, I, I, try, I try and stick to training adults because it's... The, the stuff I teach, I don't want people to do. <laughs> yeah. It's the stuff I teach... I mean, he was been a one-off that I've trained him in boxing, to be honest with you, um, because that's what he wanted to do. And I, I sort of agreed to it. And, um, and I... I because I'd agreed to it then, I sort of had to stick by what I was saying. To be honest with you, I didn't think he'd come back, right? So yeah. I sort of had to stick to that. But the martial arts stuff that I teach, that's going to continue. Um, I've been having a, there's a lot of people doing these campaigns on knife crime these days, and we were talking about that before after that video of that fucking coward this yeah. week in the city centre. Um, 
and you know stuff like that i'm gonna maybe start looking into that soon i'm just gonna get through this this last lockdown because they've still got all the yeah. stupid rules on us um, it, yeah and i I, 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 I shared it um, i shared it about him um, i i angers me especially yeah. in my own city yeah. about him um, you know the the knife crime that's yeah. happening you know it's it, I'm involved in something called Weapons Down Gloves yeah. Up, which is um, which is where we deliver workshops and we go in and we, we you know, we, we, we reach these kids mm. where they're really difficult to reach. Well, we yeah. go to anyway, and it's about like that ripple effect. You can help yeah. one person then, you know. Do, do you know what, though? I think the, pro- the problem is with it now is you've got a lot of, like, our, our generation as such, we could fight. <laughs> so there was never, when I, I used to work on the door when I was 18, 19, if, if two people were having a fight, they'd go outside the pub, They'd have a fight and they'd both come back in. Mm. And you'd let them both back in, they'd have a pint with each other. Yeah. And that'd be that, it'd be over. There'd be none of this, oh, my mate's gonna stab him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And th- it's a lot of them, the, these kids can't fight. So I think they're, they're very scared to go out and uh, yeah. have that well, confrontation. I, 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 I said it myself, uh, Kane, I think, no, you're nothing but a shit house, mm. right? If yeah. you carry a knife, and like I said, you're a coward if you can't fight someone yeah. without one. But also, right, it's like, um, it's, f- it's, 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 it's so common as well. Yeah. The you know? pro- I think the problem is, is because there's that many people carrying them now, yeah. I think some people feel they've got to carry one in order to defend themselves. I, I got think that's another, that's another problem to it. She, right, I, I share this with the kids in the schools, right, and, you know, I've really mentioned this on, I've, I've, sort of, I've wrote about it in me. In, 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 my, in my book, it's about him. Um, I had an experience years ago, and there's a name that I'm not going to mention mm. there. A lot of people know the family, uh, and I was stabbed in the chest. Mm. Now, I was a, I was about in my, my early 20s. There was, there, was a, there was an altercation, it was early hours in the morning. Some girl was getting a, a few slaps, and I thought, you know, being a big hero, a rebel without a cause, I'll, I'll intervene here. Yeah. And this kid's pulled the knife out. Didn't know who he was, I later I found out. And I've asked him to put the knife and I'll fight you, right? Yeah. I don't care, my ego's involved here. Yeah. You know, loads of, loads of crazy ego going on. I'll fight you. Um, put the knife down, the knife's not getting put down. He's chasing me, I'm dodging him. He's yeah. getting out of breath, he's, he's getting fed up because he can't catch me, right? He, he flags the taxi. Now my, my, my ego and my pride's involved again. Yeah. I've been jogging, I've been to and fro in here, like, like uh, West Side Story. Yeah. And um, as he's getting in the taxi, I've ran over and I've grabbed him and I've pulled him and he's turned around and he's plunged the, the knife into my chest. Yeah. Now, I was lucky that I'd had a, a hoodie and a coat mm. over, plus I was, you know, I've been yeah. in the gym a lot and I had a little bit of muscle padding mm. there. And I've got a scar uh, to prove this. But you know what, right? I remember getting stabbed and shitting down mm. immediately, just fell to the floor, sat yeah. on my arse. This kid got in a taxi with this beard, by the way. Yeah. The way I was trying to fucking defend and was waving with a big manic grin. Yeah. And that could have turned out any other way. I could have, you know, obviously, you know, the, 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 you could end up dead. Mm. Um, but now what I say to kids now, if I speak to kids, I say, you know what, right? I've had that chance now and with the information that I know now, I'd have ran a mile. Yeah. I'd have ran for the hills. And why would I do that? Because... I'm living to fight another day, in a sense, right? Mm. And I'm also, that moment, that split second, m- my, m- that could end my life. Yeah. That could end my life, and there's no journey, mm. there's no family. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of loss going on, in, 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 you know, around you then. Mm. So, it's about that decision. It's about saying, okay, oh, me, uh, am I gonna walk away and lose face because all my mates are gonna be buzzing off me? I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah. Right, if you called me all the dickheads and all the tits under the sun and pulled the blades on me, mm. right, yeah, nice one, I'm a dickhead, see you later, ta da, and I'll move on. But years ago, that would be, that yeah. would have been it. Even even now, though, when we train for knives and stuff like that, the reality is we're going to get caught. You yeah. know? And, and that's with us, with us training for that, we, we accept, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to yeah. be caught, let's just reduce it. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's the mentality towards it. But, Back, back on the knives, when I got done for the uh, kidnapping in 2009, there was, um, I had uh, a couple of co-defendants on it at the time. Uh, one of them, was, he was only the same age as me he was, so he, he got the same sentence as me, four years. Yeah. And then um, when, when, we, when we all come out from that sentence, I, uh, I moved away from the town because I thought I just need a fresh start. And it was one of my attempts to 
try and sort my life out at the time. But it's geographical. I mean, yeah, but yeah. in um, I think I think he carried on with what he was doing, and um, and sadly ended up in a fight one night, and a young lad got killed, and he got uh, he got stabbed in the leg, and he cut his artery, and um, so it was it weren't the same people who were involved, but it was the similar sort of circles. It was one area and another one, and um, he. My co-defendant wasn't the one that stabbed him. It was it was someone else who he was with. But he still got sent down on the joint venture. And I think he got 27 years for it, if I remember right. Yeah. And that was... A, but to me now, I, I look at that and think, well, that's that's 27 years to him. So his life's over. Yeah. But it, it's... it's 27 like, years to anyone, or even yeah. even in the 20s. You know, you, 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 you're you halfway through yeah. near the, you know, yeah. your but mission out. You've not just lost the life of one person, have you? When you got to think, when you do that, you haven't lost that life. If you get into a fight and you lose, well, so, so fucking what? You know, I've lost fights before. There's not, nothing to be embarrassed about with it. I've mm-hmm. lost fights in the rings loads of times, just because of my ego going. So a phone call, can you fight in two hours? Yeah, and, and you <laughs> you turn up, don't you? And just yeah. do it. And you get there and think. Fucking hell. The he's, black eye. It's quite hard, this bloke, isn't he? <laughs> you know what I mean? The black eye in school was the one for me. Yeah. No, we got sparked. Yeah. I had a black eye. And it was like, the, 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 I was just like, just shave you up with a big shame buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Get on that. And I was, I, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's. Did you just get over it? <laughs> no, it's like, it, you wear it with a, like, like yeah. it's a fucking badge of honour, yeah, don't you? Yeah, that's it. Like, but, but now, like, with, with him, for example, his, you know, his life's gone, his family, that, all the families there have lost the kids, whatever way you look at it, yeah. they've, all, they've all lost them. Now, when I was inside, I didn't want my nan and granddad visiting me when I was inside. And even after two years, when I got out, the, the amount that aged, you know, how, how they looked different to what yeah. I remember, if you know what I mean. It was like, it was dramatic. So I couldn't imagine going to prison for someone else doing something next to me, you know what I mean? And then you're, you're missing out on, on everything you've ever known. You've got your family that will die when you're in there. You, you're not going to funerals. You know, the prison won't let you out to see your nan, your granddad, your auntie's funerals. No, not a chance. So you won't see them. You know, your visits are limited in prison anyway, aren't they? So yeah. you've literally, you, you've lost everything the minute you do it. You know, and is that worth it for the sake of having a fight? That, that video we've seen, right, there was, that if that kid had carried on that fight, whether he'd have won or lost, right, he could have gone, I had a right good scrap with so-and-so. And that would have been that. But now, he can't even say that. Oh, I was having a fight, but my mate stabbed him. Do you know what I mean? There's no no glory in that story, is there? Yeah. No. It just tells me, well, that's a bit shit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Why do that? You know, just just have a fight. It's n- it's not hard. Just have a fight. No one no one's gonna die. It's very rare that someone dies from a fight. Other and than you know what? The head on you the took the words right out of me. Out. I was thinking about yeah. this yesterday. I thought, you know what? Right. It's very rare for someone to die from a few mm. blows to the head fighting yeah. one to one. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it happens all the time. Right. But it's very likely yeah. if you get stabbed. Yeah. And it's not only we're not only talking about knives, we're talking about guns, we're talking about yeah. weapons. You know. I mean, luckily I've never had that many dealings with them. The, the times I have had dealings with people with knives, I've, I've always been all right. But training's pulled me through that. If you know what I mean, that's been it. Now on that that video, for example, if, if that lad had just done the, the basic things that we train, that might not have, he might not have got to that point. And that's why we train what we do. But even you know? so, even so, I seen a couple of doormen walking yeah. towards, and they were actually like, I'm thinking to myself, if that was me, mm. like, I'd be over there screaming and shouting. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, the prob- that's another problem with the doormen these days. If they walk off the door, they're not insured anymore. Yeah. And then they're the ones who are out of order and looking at losing the badge because they went against the SIA's rules. You mm. know, can't leave your door to do this. So, what you, you your- decisions you. Do you make you know when it comes to saving someone's life or losing your job? I think you, I think your decisions go with uh, morals, don't they? Yeah. Of what you morally do. I mean, the, there's lots of things you can you can think of to do morally, isn't there? Yeah. You know, but whether you do them is another thing. You know, it's um, like the, a lot of people these days they're more interested in videoing something. Oh than, yeah. Than they yeah. are to helping people. Yeah, I see it all the time on social media. It's uh, like they'll, they'll video themselves cutting some string off a duck. You know, yeah. or something like that. Why video it? Just cut the string off the duck and let it go. It's yeah. it's it's <laughs> there's a lot of um, um, there's a lot of people wanting to do, um, you know, be glory on yeah, Susan. There's no need for it. No. Just just do do your fucking good deed. There's oh. blogging and there's journeys and, and yeah, there's yeah. Go go tell your missus when you get in. Yeah. You don't need two million likes for setting a, a duck free yeah. or taking the string off a seal. Throw a bouquet of flowers at you. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, do, just don't do it. Just go and be good. Yeah, and you yeah. don't need it on social there's, media. There's always a motive in the agenda yeah, for people. Yeah. You know. It's like these ones that are going up and giving homeless people money, you know, and stuff like that. I bought the video of themselves doing it. Just go give him money. You know, you, you don't need to. You don't need to Look how great I am. A bloke who's self seeking. You know, yeah, who's, yeah, who's on his ass and probably don't want to be fucking filmed by you. Yeah. You know, just give him money. Fuck off back home. <laughs> I mean, don't, so you, you, don't so need you're, one Instagram. Yeah, so you believe in just like doing doing the right things, yeah. doing good things without yeah, having like, to. My life's very private. The yeah. only thing I put online is my training, and that's just as an update for people. I put the odd self defense video out there yeah. for people. I did one about clip on ties, for example, because everyone kept asking me why I don't wear one. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I did one on that, you know. But again, I was because I was sick of people asking me, and I thought, you know, a bit of knowledge is better than none. Yeah. But so I do little videos like that. I put the odd ones of me doing the pads on because. That's what I enjoy doing, but yeah. my personal life don't go online. If I do something good, I don't yeah. need to tell anyone. It's you know? each, it's each to their own, and yeah. we just have to, we just have to learn to to live and let live. Yeah. No, I I agree on, on on a few things. So, what's your family like? Like you know, you you mentioned your your, your nan and granddad, and yeah, yeah. That's have you got how's strong. your how's your family now? Is it is it um. Have you, are you, are you still in touch well, with your sisters? It, and no, I, I'm hardly in touch. I do speak to them from time to time. I think uh, I do want to speak to them again a bit more. Yeah. You know, now. You know, now everything, we're all older and all that now. Yeah. But there was a lot of resentment at the time with my mum and, uh, and their dad as well. So that um, I think they stopped me from seeing my sisters when I was younger just because of that reason. So I didn't, uh, if they were ever visiting, I, I wasn't told. So, yeah. so I could never see them anyway. So that... So that was put in place for me. I didn't really have a say in it. So I don't know. We'll uh, see what happens. My nan and granddad are still all right. They're still getting on with things. I haven't been seeing them for the past year because this this COVID stuff. Because my nan's got heart problems. Yeah. So she's uh, she's got heart problems, diabetic. So I don't want to risk going around the house at the minute. And mainly because they're scared of it. To be honest with you, I'm yeah. not. I I'm not that bothered. But I thought if it gives them peace of mind, then I'll just speak to them on the phone, which is pretty much ring them every week. Brilliant. Um, um, but yeah, if, uh, yeah, things are going great oh, at that's the minute. It. So, so is um, so life at the moment is um, is you you doing well? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing all right. The um, the gym's going all right since um, this lockdown ended, and uh, yeah, right, life's going good. So we're coming to the end, right? And I always say this, came right, right. So uh, you know, you you talked about you know. How, how tough it was growing up and the contributing yeah. factors that led to a few of your behaviours and mm. you know the violence and the gangs yeah. uh, the, the, the bad company corrupts good character yeah. you're mixed on you're mixed you know you're, you're mixing with the name um, you know, you're talking about change mm. uh, and, and helping others in your community and being a benefit instead of a drain yeah. right so what would you say to a young Kane coming through those doors I mean someone like going through the care system because that's I don't know, just a little pearl of wisdom. Oh, well, do you know what? When you're in that care system, mate, there's no coming out of it. You know what I mean? Get ready. <laughs> Get ready for that roller coaster because you're not coming off. I'll tell you that much. Um, so, what would you, what would you, what I, what advice or guidance would you offer some a, a young, a youngster these days? Um, well, a youngster these days, probably not a lot because it's all changed. We don't yeah. have the the shit that we had, mate, back then. It's all. Uh, Ofsted now are well on top of things and stuff like that, and there's nothing. When you just just stick to your guns on what you're doing, you know what I mean, and don't fall down them paths with people because there's no need to do it. It doesn't. It doesn't going to get you anywhere. It's got me sent to prison. Yeah. It's got me no income for near enough all my life. You know, it's got me absolutely nothing and nowhere until now, until I've stopped it all, where I can actually say, do you know what? I've got a bit of experience on this. Yeah. So, what you know, what am I teaching now? violence mm. that, that's what i'm teaching i'm teaching the only difference now is i'm teaching people to be violent against bad people who are trying to do something to them that's the mm. only difference so defense, a defense that's that's what we do it for yeah. isn't it i'm yeah. i'm basically teaching people now how to deal with 18 year old me mm. you know and I, I never thought i'd end up doing that but that's what i've yeah. that's what i've sort of ended up with you know so all that yeah it's given me some qualifications in that so yeah i i haven't got a level 10 PT qualification. You know what I mean? I don't have any gradings. You've got lived experience. I don't have any gradings in any martial yeah. arts. You know, and that's it. Uh, but I've, I've got more experience. Who do you want to learn about knives off? That's, that's the question. Mm. The guy who got stabbed and now he's going to be, now he's going to teach knife defence. 
or do you want to learn off the guy who didn't get stabbed and fucking levered them all? That's, mm. that's, that's the guy who I want to learn off. You know what I mean? And that's my mentality. I so did a lot of want to learn off me, then believe <laughs> yeah, I got stabbed. But, so you, you want to learn off someone who's done yeah. it, don't you? Yeah, you know, yeah and I know what you mean. Because I've had a lot of fights, I can tell you, no, this works. Yeah. This doesn't, you know? Yeah. Don't do it. Please. You know, and that's the problem. A lot of these dojos, they advertise the self-defense. Well, <laughs> tell me the last fight you were fucking in, mate. Because mm. you wasn't, mm. you know? I can tell you all of mine. You know, I can tell you where I've been. I can tell you all these stories. But um, no, a lot of them, they're not the same these days, are they? So no. that's what I'm hoping to get out there now is my brand of self-defense, which I think is uh, a lot more realistic now, just based on the experiences. So all in all, it gave me some qualifications, I think. Yeah, it So has. it's not a bad thing. No, it isn't. But yeah, anyone going into it, just stick to your, stick to your guns on life. Brilliant. Get sir. through it. Brilliant. And with that, uh, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll put all your um, your information on yeah. in the description. Yeah, nice right. one.